you felt a tingle of capacitance in the tip of your finger specifically because you made that arc angle of charge collapse where you gained inertia from the geometry of the collapsing wave. So during that process of collapse, you're gaining power. And we need to understand why. I'm going to give you another simple example, and then I'm going to show you how the geometry does it. The simple example is, of course, Schauberger's work on implosion. Let's see, I was at slide number 97. I'm now going to go down to the example from Victor Schauberger. We have the hero of the Schauberger work here, if I may say, Martin Selecki, who's filming. Martin made all the films, or a lot of them, on Victor Schauberger's famous work on implosion, working with Callum Coates, who worked, wrote all the books about uh, Schauberger's work on implosion, and Martin himself has done many of the experiments. He's joined us today from Byron. We're honored that you're here. Thank you for being here, Martin, and filming. It's a cool thing. And so Martin is something of an expert on these things. Please ask him afterwards. It's a fine thing. So here is one of the experiments that those groups, one of the kinds of experiments that those groups who do the famous work on implosion, here it is. You've got about 50,000 RPM here. Here's the water. The water is very pure, but it's piezoelectrically doped, very much like <laughs> how we're doing hydrolysis, okay? So this water being piezoelectric, piezoelectric means the pressure, mechanical stricture, becomes voltage. Very simple. So, <clears throat> and the doping just means that you have a trace amount of a substance in the water that affects the con conductivity, like the electrolyte in hydrolysis. So, the water is now a capacitor. It's going to 50,000 RPM. Now, in Implosion Research Center in Plymouth in the UK, Jonathan Do and Dolly, where they make the implosion products, <clears throat> the inside of this cavity is silver. We now know that it'd probably be better even gold, palladium, and platinum because those are, those are the actual phase conjugating dielectrics, which we will talk more about later. But they make an implosive capacitor. Anyway, once it gets going at 50,000 RPM, you actually, what you see is the air around the thing starts turning blue, <clears throat> and it makes an electric field that's implosive, which is actually the key to the Joe cell. And <clears throat> then the pollution in the surrounding area begins to be sorted. Many things happen. One of the many things that does happen is that it spontaneously starts getting colder also like the Joe cell. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the voltage difference appears here to here. And that voltage difference means this is a generator which is making power wattage from gravity. And the power does come from gravity. And it works so well that Hitler wrote the check to Mr. Schauberger for inventing it. It was functional as a generator. Now, you need to know why this starts getting colder and why it makes voltage from gravity. Why is there a voltage difference from here to here? And if you're good, you will know the polarity of that voltage difference. That's called implosion. And that is the reason life happens. Every leaf of every tree, every pine cone, everything that's self-respecting enough to call itself life has learned how to get that voltage from gravity. And everything alive does that by being fractal and using golden ratio. So all your biology teachers for, you know, how many centuries have told you everything alive uses golden ratio, haven't they? But you know what they forgot to tell you? Was why? There is an electrical reason. The electrical reason is that's how you get voltage from gravity, actually. It's life. And we're going to explain a little bit more about gravity, what gravity is. Gravity is the implosive collapse of charge, obviously. So what I promised to do was to show you how that works, why that works, <clears throat> and to do that because the central issue of this evening, the central issue of the first half of this evening's conversation, right here in our opening slide, is to suggest to you that that single geometry is the cause of gravity and life and perception and bliss and color and alphabets, right? <laughs> so in order to understand how that geometry of waves creates gravity and life and perception and alphabets, you need to understand how and why that geometry makes a force which is centripetal. So you really need to know for yourself why that geometry makes the electric field centripetal. Because if you do, you'll know why life exists and why gravity exists. And further, you'll know why you need to go home urgently and make a magnetic map of your bed and your house and your garden. <laughs> and they all need to look like a rose. So it's very important that you understand for yourself 
how centripetal forces are generated. When you know, for example, they did the Agnihotra, and you know the people who did the Agnihotra did not die in the Bhopal chemical disaster? The Agnihotra is a phase conjugate field that created a centripetal force, and <laughs> those are the survivors. Little hint, when the tornadoes come, and when the solar wind comes, and when the rapture comes, and when the compression comes, and when the death comes, <laughs> compress or die. <laughs> right? So, if you understand the principle, you are then empowered. So here is the principle. And then you can see how everything flows from there, including the answer to that very simple question, why does an object fall to the ground? Because you need to know, even though Einstein didn't. So, this is the only geometry we're talking about this evening. We're only talking about one. So nobody here can say tonight's lecture was complicated. I won't permit it. Because, because I only talked about one thing. I spoke about nothing else this evening. Only that picture. That is the only picture I have discussed tonight and the only picture I will discuss tonight. So please do not go home and say that you listened to a complicated lecture tonight. I won't have it. No, it's simple. Okay. So in this geometry, I've got ten golden mean spirals approaching center, which just happens to be the top-down view of DNA, earth grid, zodiac, every living protein, and hydrogen. <laughs> Okay. In that picture, when the waves approach each other, the reason that this is the solution to compression and the solution to constructive wave interference <clears throat> is that when wavelength A meets wavelength B, they said, oh, let's have babies. I mean, let's have conjugal relations. I mean, let's conjugate. And they have kids. And the kids add and multiply recursively the wavelength and the velocity. The name for recursive adding and multiplying is conjugation. Do you get it? Oh, let's have conjugal relations. Let's see if our DNA can add and multiply. <laughs> Do you see what the principle? And in physics, phase conjugation, and this is a picture of what lasers are doing when they conjugate, is the first time we ever discovered self-organization and time reversal, by the way. So, when the waves are meeting in this way, they're adding and multiplying the, the interference. And when waves interfere, they recursively add and multiply, and only golden ratio solves the problem of adding and multiplying so that everybody fits the nest. We just showed you, right? You could add any two numbers and get the next one. Or you could multiply. Well, the golden ratio is the only proportion in the universe that adds and multiplies. That's why it's the solution to constructive interference and the solution to Einstein's nightmare. <laughs> Infinite constructive compression. So, and it's why that's the physics of black holes, as Nassim Haramine has recently demonstrated. But doesn't any frequency add and multiply? No, if you add and multiply a large number of waves then they need to add and multiply their wavelength and their velocity. And any other ratio, like for example 2, would create destructive interference. You add and multiply 2 plus 2 plus 4 and 8, and then the 8 and the 16 interfere with the 2 and the 4, and that's destructive. Whereas golden ratio allows this pattern to be constructive. This is the only possible, the only possible geometry of constructive interference. Another way of saying that is this is the only geometry that can allow an infinite number of waves to meet. If, if you have two waves that are the same, say that you, you're... Um, you have, let's say you have wave, wavelength 1 and wavelength 2. They interfere and make wavelength 3. Now wavelength 3 has to interfere with 2 and makes 5, and they interfere, and that's destructive to destructive to destructive. Yeah, but if they're the same... So it doesn't matter if they're golden ratio or not, they'll still be constructive. But if, if wavelength 1 and wavelength 1 interfere and then they make wavelength 2, that's an octave. And that's destructive interference to Why? start with. Why is it destructive? You can do the software we just modeled. Octaves are the most destructive wave possible for waves to interfere.